Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool PowerShell module I think you should check out every Monday. Uh, in today's episode, we're actually going to look at PS Thread Job. So PS Thread Job is a PowerShell module for running concurrent jobs in threads rather than processes. Uh, it's similar to Posh RS Job, which I'll show off a little bit of, um, where it uses run spaces in the background to run jobs rather than starting up PowerShell processes um, in the background. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to first look at uh, the performance difference between uh, starting thread jobs versus starting um, the default built-in start job. So right here I have a measure command call and we're going to start 100 jobs using start job and then we're going to pipe it to wait job. As you can see in the background here it's actually starting PowerShell processes and you can see the ID is changing and it's popping up new PowerShell processes whenever it needs to start a job. Uh, this is because start job for every single job is going to start a new process and isolate that um, job in that process. This can be okay for things like um, you know things that use a lot of memory or something like that where you don't want to swamp the actual like main process uh, but because you're starting a new process for every single job, it adds a lot of overhead. And as you can see, I had to cut out part of the video because it's taking so long to actually execute these jobs. So as you can see, I had to cut out part of the video because it took a minute and uh, 22 seconds to actually execute 100 jobs using start job and waiting for each one of those jobs to finish. Let's actually look at what it takes to um, run the same thing in posh rs job. So although we're looking at thread job, I also wanted to highlight posh rs job just because it's a very similar module and you um, should definitely check that out too. So now we're going to run 100 jobs using uh, start rs job. So we run that and what you're going to notice is we don't have any other pwsh processes starting up. That's because it's running all of these jobs in memory and it's not running them as background processes. And as you can see, it took seven second, seven and a half seconds to run all those jobs. So now let's see what happens when we try to run that in start thread job. So that is the module we're looking at today. So very much like RS job, it is not starting any other um, PowerShell processes. It's actually just running that all inside this particular PowerShell process. And as you can see, the thread job ran uh, in about six seconds. So it's very similar to uh, start RS job, where it is very fast to start all these jobs because it's starting at background run spaces rather than starting them as separate processes. All right, so now I want to look at some uh, some of the cool parameters that you can specify for um, for start thread job. So the first parameter we're going to look at is throttle limit. Throttle limit is used to specify how many um, pretty much threads you want to run or run spaces that you want to utilize in the background. So as you can see here, I have three jobs that I want to start. Each one of those jobs is going to loop uh, 100 times and it's going to wait 100 milliseconds per loop. And um, then you'll see that the throttle limit is set to two. So only two jobs should run at once. So let's run this. And as you can see, um, I started those three jobs. The first two here, 304 and 305 are running. Um, while the uh, last one here, which is 306, is not running because we can only run two jobs at once. All right, let's type get job again. And now you can see the first two jobs have completed while the um, 306 job, the one that was waiting for the first two to complete, is now running. So this will take about 10 seconds because that's how long um, it would take to loop over that stuff. And you can see now our 306 job has completed. So that's one of the way to kind of limit the number of thread jobs that are running. All right, um, you can additionally pass things uh, into thread jobs uh, via the argument list parameter. So because they are running in a background run space, you can't just use variables that exist in the current script. You can pass them in though via an argument list, and then you can use the args variable to actually access those arguments inside that particular job. So in this case, what we're going to do is run this. It's going to start that job. And if we look at get job, it's completed that job. And we'll get job 307. And if we call receive job, we should be able to get the output of that job. And as you can see, I got the argument that I passed in uh, via the args uh, variable. 
All right, so another way you can pass things into a thread job is actually via pipeline input. So if you pass it in via pipeline input, you're going to use the built-in uh, variable input to actually access that particular input. Uh, this is a great way if you wanted to pipe a bunch of stuff and start a bunch of jobs, like get process, pipe it to start thread job, and then use the uh, input variable to access each one of those processes. You could do something like that here. So let's execute that. And as you can see, um, our job has completed. And if we get job uh, 308 and then we uh, receive that job, we can see that the pipeline value was actually passed in via the input variable. So that is another way that you can actually pass input into uh, a thread job. Additionally, um, thread jobs support uh, file paths. So if you don't want to specify a script block and you want to specify something like a file path, uh, we could do that with um, the file path parameter. And then I could just specify a script like the one I have here um, and execute that. And you'll see that uh, if I get job 309 and then receive the input or the job from that one, uh, I should have the uh, value from that script file. So I was just outputting a string here, and now I have the value of that string there. Uh, one parameter that is actually not documented that I noticed on the uh, on the Microsoft documentation is that we have the streaming host parameter. Uh, and what's really cool about this is that you can actually pass in the current host, and I'll use that current host to uh, interact with certain things. For example, uh, if I want to call read host or write warning, if you did that in the background uh, without specifying the streaming host, you wouldn't actually see this stuff pop up in the host. But if I actually run this now, first what you'll notice is that now the, uh, the console is waiting for me to type something in. So I could say, hello. And uh, you'll notice that um, hello I'll show you that in a second, but you'll see the warning popped out here. That's because I had write warning set. Uh, if I didn't have the streaming host set, you wouldn't actually see that pop up in the in the terminal here. But since I set streaming host, uh, it does pop up. But now if we receive that job, so we'll get 310. And then if we do receive job, you'll see that I have hello and the warning um, returned because uh, hello is passed via read host. So that's one way to kind of make a job interactive. Um, I realize that it's probably not what you're trying to achieve with jobs, but if you're debugging a job, that might be a really good way to go. All right, um, another parameter that you can use is in an initialization script. So an initialization script will run um, before the job starts. So you could do things like uh, define a function, for example. So in this case, I defined my function get stuff, uh, and then I called it in my script block. So if I execute that, uh, this should output uh, the string get stuff. Um, so let's check that. And you can see that it did, in fact, run the initialization script before uh, the script block. Uh, so jobs actually have a bunch of parameters that you can, or properties that you can access if you wait for the job or use get job to receive the job. Um, so in this example, I'm actually using write warning again. Um, and what you're going to notice with this example is that when I run this, we don't see that warning pop up because I didn't set the streaming host. But uh, since I did write the warning, I can actually access the job property uh, of warning. And you'll see that I get the, the warning value down here in my console. Uh, so the job itself actually has a bunch of parameters that you wouldn't normally see if you just use the default formatting. But you can get things like errors and uh, warning, verbose, and progress messages, and that kind of stuff pretty easily just by accessing those properties. All right, uh, finally, I want to show how to um, access or use the debugger to access and debug um, background jobs. Since this is all running in the same PowerShell process, we can actually use the Visual Studio Code debugger to uh, jump into this thread job. So first of all, let's uh, start our job here. And you're going to see that if I run get job, it's going to say that this job is running. Uh, that's because we are waiting on this wait debugger command right now. And what we can do is we can actually call get run space. And what you're going to see is a bunch of different run spaces that are or have been created uh, because of things like uh, start thread job. So some of these other run spaces are just kind of the VS Code extension creating a bunch of run spaces or the PowerShell Pro, Pro Tools extension creating run spaces. Um, but you can see this last run space here is uh, 
in breakpoint. So that kind of means that this uh, this particular run space is waiting for the debugger to connect to it, and it's like sitting on a breakpoint. And that is the start uh, thread job run space that I just created. So what you can actually do is uh, what I've set up is this launch.json file. And right here, you'll see that I have this configuration that is attached to interactive session run space, which means that I want to add uh, attached to a run space that is currently executing in the interactive uh, console window. And that would be, for example, run space uh, 323. Three. Um, so if we go to the debugger here and then make sure that we select that particular configuration and hit the run button, it's going to actually give you a list of all the run spaces that are available. And you're going to see the bottom run space here, uh, run space 323, three is the one that was in breakpoint. So I'm going to click that. And now what you're going to notice is the uh, Visual Studio Code debugger is going to break at that wait debugger command. And you're going to see things like um, the variables on the left hand side, the call stack if you're like loaded in a module and you know a couple um, frames deep inside the call stack, that kind of thing. And uh, from there you can step through your code and everything and debug that actual uh, run space in start thread job. Um, so start thread job is a great way to uh, increase the performance of your scripts by running uh, background jobs directly in the same PowerShell process instead of starting um, background processes with uh, start job. So definitely check it out. Uh, you can just install it from the PowerShell gallery. And um, if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel because we're going to be releasing new videos for new modules every Monday.